So far, we've only discussed how funds pay for core project costs like equipment and labor. In addition to these costs, various fees have to be paid to the lenders who provide the capital and arrange the financing. The curious thing about such financing costs is that the only way they can be paid for is with further capital commitments made by the sponsors and the lenders themselves. The company has no other cash to draw on. Generally, lenders charge two kinds of fees, upfront fees and commitment fees. Upfront fees are paid at financial close and are quoted as a share of the total funds committed. Commitment fees are paid through the construction term as a fee charged on the undrawn balance of any funds committed. It all sounds simple, but calculating these sums is trickier than it may first look. Let's go back to Excel to work it out. In the construction tab, we have made space for our debt fee and other financing cost calculations. We've loaded the total capital commitments on the left here. We've done this for both our main sources of capital and for the VAT and standby facilities. We load the upfront fee charges for each of these capital sources and calculate the fees due on the first period of construction. Using earlier planned funding calculations, we calculate the undrawn balance for each of our commitments. Remember that commitment fees are typically quoted as annualized rates. This means we have to convert them to monthly rates to determine the charges which accrue. There's a subtle point to keep in mind when you create these calculations. These debt fees are being calculated to set our construction budget. As such, this decision is made before the start of construction. At this point in time, nobody is planning on things going wrong. So these calculations need to exclude any unplanned activity like contingency funding. We assume that the standby facility remains undrawn for these budgeting calculations. Great! That calculates all of our debt fees. Now all we need to do is to add them to the total costs through this subtotal line and... Oh dear, Excel doesn't like that. Remember that I said there was something odd about the debt fees. Debt fees have to be paid for the services rendered by lenders, but the only cash the company has to pay the lenders comes from the lenders themselves. In order to pay the lenders' own fees, the lenders have to lend more money to the company. However, since the fees due are linked to the sum of money borrowed, extra borrowing increases the fees which have to be paid. That's the problem right there. Tracing these calculations through our model creates a circular reference. In case you haven't met them before, circularities describe calculation paths which tie the value of a cell to its own output. Such loops usually occur accidentally, but we just saw the problem we're trying to solve is inherently circular. How do we deal with this? There are a number of methods available, and each has its pros and cons. In this course, we will use one of the simplest and most secure methods, which is taught at top training programs worldwide. The first step is to realize that our problem can be expressed iteratively. This means it can be broken down into a few repeated steps. What you'll realize thinking about this sequence is that with each step, the values we add become smaller and smaller. We only need to fund a portion of these fees with debt, and the fees that debt creates are just a portion of that portion, and if we continue, the numbers eventually become too small for us to care about. This means that if we calculate these iterations in Excel, after a few repetitions, the values for our debt and fees no longer change materially. They stabilize. So we don't have to carry on calculating forever. Just long enough to reach a good approximation. This video is taken from the Project Finance Modeling course by DealMaker. Get the full course today for a discounted price 
with this exclusive discount code. Just click the link below.